CataractCoach.com. Senior residents stop and chop. This resident does a great job, but a few steps may need improvement. We have an anonymous PGY4 resident. That means postgraduate year four or the last year of ophthalmology residency here in the USA. And this resident done about 160 cataracts so far. So this is the paracentesis. Notice that the blade was inked prior to making the para, so it stains the corneal stroma temporarily, so it makes it easy to see the position of that paracentesis. Now the draping looks pretty good. All the lashes are out of the way. The lid margin is sequestered. I like that, so excellent job here. And I'm guessing right about now that's some anesthetic going inside the anterior chamber to help. Looks like the patient's probably under top of the anesthesia because there's a lot of eye movement. And let's see, there's our uh, viscoelastic fill. It's a nice dispersive viscoelastic, good fill. I like that. And now fixating the eye with some forceps to the paracentesis. And here comes the keratoma. Let's look at that main incision entering the limbus area pretty nicely, advancing it, good tunnel length, and I like the incision, it's just a little bit too anterior for me, not bad, you still hit some limbal vessels, but that's a darn good incision, for 160 cases in, that's definitely an A. Now let's see the rexus, now it's a little tough because the patient still has quite a bit of movement here, but starting off with the cystotome and getting that flap turned over, that looks pretty good. Only a little viscoelastic is egressing from the incision, so that's a good sign. The assistant here is probably an attending who's squirting the cornea there. And now here comes the rest. Let's watch the pivoting. Nice pivoting. Notice how the forceps pivot within the incision and are not being pushed up against the walls or side of the incision. Very nice job on the rexus. So certainly this resident's very talented. You're doing great for 160 cases in. That's a beautiful rexus. Let's see the hydrodissection. So letting out a little viscoelastic. I don't usually do that, but that's okay. You can do that. A little bit of hydrodissection here. Let's see a good fluid wave. And maybe it does start to rotate. So that's good. Remember my saying, if it does not spin, you will not win. This is spinning, so you're going to do fine. Now, a little more dispersive viscoelastic. Hey, I like that right in the center. Gosh, you must have seen that on cataractcoach.com. Now let's see the phaco technique. Here comes the phaco probe. Looks like maybe a 2.4 sleeve, which looks great. Going in here, and let's see what's coming in the side port. Let's see what we got here. So bevel up, so maybe making cleaning up that uh, epinuclear material. Okay, a groove down the middle, so maybe you're going to do a divide and conquer or a stop and chop. Notice how the eye stays in primary. I like it. This is very good. So remember, the novice mistake would be to push the eye towards the nasal canthus. Um, but this case is going pretty well. The eye is staying in primary, so those light reflexes are in the center of the cornea. I wish the microscope was centered a little bit better, but it's still pretty good. A nice groove going on there. That looks great. And I'm just curious to see what's going to be the second instrument. Is it going to be a chopper of some design? Is it going to be a spatula? And let's take a look. So it's a ball-tipped chopper. That'll, that'll work fine. So splitting the nucleus here. Let's see. Cracking it there. In the, now distally, now centrally, and now sub-incisionally. Very nice job. Let's see the stop and chop. Looks like the chopper is going to go here. Oh, thank you for setting off the camera. That makes a big difference. And chopper goes around. And hey, there's a chop. I like it. Good job. Now the eye's a little bit drifted toward the, toward the nasal canthus, but not too bad. Again, this is actually quite a good job. Good. Let's see the attending squirting the eye there. Let's try again. Let's see if we get the second chop in. And chopper goes around. And it's pretty good. Hey, you got four quadrants. Take them down. Very nice technique here. I like the position of the phaco incision versus the paracentesis. About two and a half clock hours apart. That's just about perfect. That looks great. And now taking on the pieces one by one. Really nice ability to move within the eye. Bring the pieces around. So left hand dexterity is good here. 
Remember, if you're just starting to learn cataract surgery, you better improve that non-dominant hand dexterity. Don't let me ever see you brushing your teeth or eating food or shaving your face or doing anything else with your dominant hand. It better always be your non-dominant hand until you get that dexterity up. Nice, cl clean removal of the nuclear fragments, chopper in the safe position. As much as I, I dislike those choppers with the ball tip, this went very well, beautifully. It's a fantastic case so far. It's a very lucky patient. This patient is going to have a beautiful result. Now, we're showing you the video in real time from this anonymous resident. I thought maybe I should speed it up to twice the normal speed. It's about a nine-minute video. Now, one thing I got to tell you is the video was sent to me with the title of Nine Minute Faco. And I get it. It's a cherry-picked case. And the resident wants to pick the fastest case that, that he or she did. And you know what? I get it. I've been there. But let me encourage you about one more thing. The patient doesn't care if it was a 9-minute case or a 12-minute case. The patient cares about is how perfect was the case. In fact, let me get on a little rant here. That's one of the issues I have with the modern medical school environment in the USA, where there's a push to take away the grades and move to a pass-fail system, or even worse, do you know there's a pass now slash pass later system, which means you can't fail anything? You can either pass it now or retake the exam as many times as you want and pass later? Here's the problem with that concept. Every surgery you will do for the rest of your life is a test. And no patient wants less than 100%. The patient doesn't want you to say, oh, I did an acceptable or a passable job. It's, it's not bad. It's passable. No. The patient wants you to do as perfect as a surgery as possible. And you know what? That's what I want too for my own eyes. So get past this concept of pass, no pass, or pass and pass later. And all this. No, everything is graded in life. Life is difficult. Life is a challenge. Life is like that. All right, let's see the, the lens delivery. Here comes the IOL. Now, I'd prefer a chopper in the side port to help fixate the eye to keep it in primary position. But that looks good. Single piece acrylic lens going in the capsule bag. Looks like a Johnson & Johnson Technus lens, right? Let me see. Do we have that uh, dead zone around the periphery? Yeah, I think that is a Johnson & Johnson. It looks like a ZC Boo lens, the single-piece acrylic monofocal. That's a good lens. Going behind the optic here. I like the move here. Going behind the optic, remove viscoelastic. Very nicely done. Good job, young Jedi Knight. And now centering up the lens. Looks pretty good. So this resident is very talented. Whoever you are, let me tell you right now, there is no question you will become a very incredible, super talented, highly successful ophthalmologist in your future. You have great surgical skill, but remember, you're at case 160. Show me a video from case 1000. In fact, tell me how much you've improved since then. So at the end here, let's take a look. Oh, don't do the hydration like that. You want to do it my way. The way I've taught you is barely hydrating the roof of the incision, not those two big white balls there. And now hydrating the paracentesis, too much hydration, not enough precision there. And center up the optic here at the very end of your case. That's probably the most critical thing. But you know what? Overall, you've got fantastic hands. Be your own toughest critic. Don't be easy on yourself. Watch this video, whoever you are, this unknown person and say, you know what, that's a good video, but I can do much better. And work hard every day to be just a little bit better, and you will be outstanding.